Movies. If you want to impress me, you've got to go a step further. You've got to turn the music into a mechanic. Oh, and I don't mean rhythm games, by the way. That's too boring of an answer. What I'm talking about is games which have nothing to do with music that find cool as fuck ways to implement it as a game mechanic. Animal Crossing New Leaf has this feature where you can make your own town tune, and whatever you compose, it'll play every time you talk to someone in-game. It's a pretty simple system where you just drag notes, but you can actually get some cool results with it. I know you won't believe me, but I made my town tune by randomly dragging notes around. At one point, I actually caught my villagers out in the rain just singing the town tune. Okay, that's pretty fucking adorable and off-key. There are limitations in this creator, like speed and length, but how many games let you do something like this anyways? New Leaf makes me almost feel like a successful musician. Almost. And this goes a long way in making my playthrough feel just a bit different from everyone else's. It's a purely aesthetic thing, and yet it carries a thousand times more personal meaning than some pre-made jingle ever could. But obviously, that's not to discredit existing songs. In fact, I can think of a way that those are just as cool as making your own. The Ocarina of Time. It's a developer console. Wait, no. It's a woodwind instrument that you might have heard about before. Weather set, Song of Storms. Time set, Sun Song. Funk door, Song of Time. Probably should have been called Song of Door, but whatever. These actions didn't have to be songs. It could have just been a bed, or an item, or a mask. Maybe not a mask. That's a bad idea. But the ocarina was a genius solution. Turn melodies into Street Fighter combos. By the way, these combos and strategies are for intermediate and advanced players. Zelda is already a masterclass of merging music with gameplay, it had already been doing this for a while. What's new about it now is the importance of your instrument, the flexibility of your instrument. It's the tagline of the game. If anything, this should have been called The Legend of Ocarina. Zelda of Time. It made music a central mechanic in a game about fighting and puzzles. And, and if you wiggle the joystick when you play it, it makes a vibrato effect. None of the songs even used those extra notes. They just gave an ocarina a whammy bar. Fuck yeah. Later on when Majora's Mask rolled around, or this one if you're a child like I am, it introduced Mass, Big Shocker. And a few of them came with their own instruments too. Deku Pipes, Goron Drums, Zora Guitar. It's like a Hyrule Ska Punk Garage Band. It might not be built for it, but people made the most out of this. Tons of sweet ass compilations swarmed the internet. All because Nintendo wanted to make the game be fun. If it's not fun, why bother? At the end of the day though, the ocarina has one purpose. To play songs the game wants you to. Opponent's song. Saria's song. And by turning these melodies into short button combos, you've effectively mastered the art of mechanizing music. And as much as I like indie jazz, you can't beat the Song of Storms. That shit slaps so goddamn hard. Nintendo does not fuck around with this stuff, but more on that later. Right now, I've got something else to show you.
Admittedly, for a while, I thought note blocks were only useful in creative mode, but after spending enough time on multiplayer servers... No! No, that's the Fortnite! I realized that there is something truly special here. Note blocks require multiple talents, a knowledge of redstone engineering, and music composition. In other words, it has an extremely high skill floor, so it's easily S-tier. And it's true that these days you can just generate songs using MIDI files, but that seems like more of a pro than a con to me. And I've seen people go to absurd lengths to use these vanilla anyways. I guarantee you Minecraft has gotten more kids interested in making music than any band class ever has. They don't want to play the triangle anymore. They want to play the square. It's a thing that nobody asks for, but everyone appreciates. A sentiment which most music mechanics seem to share. Tamodachi Life is one of the few games where I can self-insert myself alongside the entire cast of Doki Doki Literature Club, because fuck you, I feel like it. More importantly, it's got this feature called the Concert Hall, where you write lyrics for pre-made songs. Let's cut to the chase. No need to hang around. So don't you go. That was in poor taste. Yes, girl, the DW. Stupid, yes. Unnecessary, also yes. But that pretty much describes this whole game, so really it's very fitting. Duets, quartets. You can't say the word bitch ass though. It might not be as robust as some of my other examples, but lyricism is half of what makes a good artist. Most of the time, I spent so much time in this game when I was 17 crafting the most thought provoking lyrics I could think of. The other half to being such a massive rap legend involves beat composition, but be composition -ition. Mario Paint. If you used the internet a decade ago, then you know, you know. We had this pretty cute composition game. What's interesting to me is that this seems like a precursor to Mario Maker in one specific regard. Note blocks. They're annoying as fuck to set up, but they make for some cool results. Zero percent, huh? I wonder why that is. Okay, that seems fun. Yeah, that's great. I, I didn't need. Oh, I was on. It's not exactly the same system, but the idea is still clear. Let players get creative with not just the gameplay, but the audio itself. Make your own fucking soundtrack if you're so goddamn smart. Do. Even the HUD harmonizes with the soundtrack. If I wanted, I could probably talk about Nintendo's music quirks alone all day. But I've got games to play here. I know I said that I wouldn't mention rhythm games, but there's this indie title, Wander Song. It's more of a Simon Says, really. Singing is how you interact, platform, talk, fight. And you remember the town tunes from New Leaf? That's intellectual property, and I will not hesitate to sue. I love shit like this, man. I feel like indies today are what AAA games were 20 years ago. Taking risky gimmicks and just running with it. All that said, the music doesn't have to be a huge mechanic. It's cool when it is, but the small things go a long way too. You could turn a scale of notes into hit sounds. You could make a piano play music, and your fairy follower sings over it. You could also make the piano fucking eat you. You could hang a bunch of bells up and spawn, and then let your player- Let your play- let Never mind, don't do that. I think my favorite thing is when games randomly throw in a functional instrument for players to just dick around on. Skullgirls has this fighter named Big Band, and his entire gimmick is instruments, right? But the kicker is... There was once an entire forum thread dedicated to Big Band songs. Also, this isn't relevant, I just want to mention that his blood type is B-flat, and I find that humorous. Mordhau, one of the few games that lets you play Bliss by Muse on a loot in the middle of a war-torn battleground until you burn to death. Japan and you told me stop it! Underage! Okay, come on! I can't fuck you! My point behind this whole video at all is, let me summarize. There's a wide range of use for music, and more people should acknowledge that. Both players and developers. Worst case, free advertisement. Best case, a generation of future musicians who will have a really fucking weird workflow.